What is up, my fellow trade hackers? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, August 9th. We will review all of our trades and positions for the week. Before we do, let's jump into the community and check out who got caught being hot this week. Uh, this week's winner, Yana Hudson, uh, made a suggestion that we start adding the underlying price of the symbol that we're trading uh, when we enter or adjust or exit. You know, this may be something that kind of sounds, um, I don't know, just kind of uh, like it should have happened to begin with, but it's something that we never really thought was of much value, but uh, it's easy to do. So we've uh, rearranged our templates uh, when we send out alerts. So we'll start including the underlying symbol price and hopefully that makes it uh, easy for everyone to, to follow along. So thank you for the suggestion, Yana. Appreciate that. You got caught being hot. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week. Starting at the beginning of the week on Monday the 5th. Scroll down there. Quite a few alerts this week with all the activity going on in the markets. Uh, starting with uh, one that's been, been a real thorn in our side, and that is forward slash ZB, the bonds. In this case, in this alert, we just added a another short strangle, taking advantage of the extreme uh, implied volatility expansion and just playing the game and adding to this. And so let's take a look at, I mean, look at this. Look at this bond move. I mean, this is crazy for bonds. Uh, I mean, it was painful as it got up to here and then it just got extended. You know, this is the point up here where you kind of wanted to jump off a bridge and then it just reversed on us, came back down. Now it's kind of just bouncing around. Hopefully we get a little bit more downside action. I mean, that's really going to help. Uh, if we take a look at our position here, here's the one from the alert, just adding this. And this is still very centered, as you can see right here. So nothing to do on that piece. The, the one that's causing us a little heartache is this one here, where you can see prices moved outside of our range. Now, if we look at just the puts, uh, you can see we've, we've still got a decent amount of premium left in those, which is why we have not rolled those up yet. And, you know, we were... And, in fact, on this day here, on Wednesday, when we did have that extended move higher, we were potentially looking to roll our puts up at that point. And good thing we just added a little patience because you know what you don't want to do is you don't want to roll up at the height and then get whipsawed back down to the downside. Uh, that's going to happen. It happens to everybody. But uh, the patience did pay off a little bit because it has come back down. We're, we're still down on this trade and we need we need some down movement and just some consolidation. Let bonds settle down, which which they will. You know, and when you're in a period like this, it almost feels like these things are just going to continue to go up forever. But they don't. And, you know, I know I harp on this all the time, but the one thing that makes this doable and makes uh, allows you to play through extended moves like this is you've got to stay small and bonds is a pretty decent sized product you know and and so you know if it's too big for your account size you know you can go to zn which is the notes which is about half the size uh, or you could trade the etf which is tlt uh, TLT is not that great of a trading symbol, but I, I prefer ZN or ZB, but you can get smaller utilizing ZN as opposed to ZB, which is the bigger one. So keep that in mind. Size is always a major, major factor when you have these extended moves. And so you've got to be cognizant of that based on the account size that you are trading. All right, next alert was a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So we had a long put vertical in Apple here, got down to 11 days to expiration. Uh, we went ahead and rolled that out to September. Also adjusted our strikes down from 215 to 205, down to 210, 200. And just as the market was moving down, we wanted to adjust those down, booked, locked in kind of that credit that we had on that piece of the trade. And just continuing to hold this for that short delta exposure. So if we go to Apple, you can see after earnings, they had a Good earnings announcement popped up, and then it's just been downhill from there. Uh, had a little bit of a bounce back. Now today it's rolling back over a little bit. Uh, if we take a look at our trade, since we did that roll, it's actually, price is actually a little bit higher, uh, but just looking for some more downside to benefit that trade. Next trade was an opening trade in SPX. So we added a new weekly iron condor in SPX. At that point, it had seven days till expiration. 
And, um, and again, just like we do with these, we're going to exit with one DTE, or if we get to a position where it hits our, uh, kind of our stop loss point. And so let's take a look at that one here. Uh, come back down nicely today. We were pretty well centered and then price moved significantly higher yesterday. And then it's now it's moving back down, uh, into, into range here for us. So, uh, today is Friday, obviously, and we're up about 1500 bucks on the trade. Um, got some questions in the community. You know, should we close this one down and kind of recenter it? Uh, no, we're going to hold this till Monday. We've got uh, three days until expiration, and so Monday is the last trading day, so we're going to go ahead and hold this. Obviously, if we get a huge gap higher, that's not going to be cool. Uh, but if we kind of stay where we're at, or better yet, get a little bit of a down move uh, into Monday, you know, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be great. I mean, we've got a max profit on this of over $3,600. So if we could pull out a $3,000 profit out of here, uh, that'd be amazing. Uh, just got to play the probabilities though. So we're going to hold this until Monday. Uh, and, and the reason we don't, we didn't want to just cut it loose and recenter is because we also have this double calendar, weekly double calendar, uh, which, uh, well, it was, it was more centered today, but now it's kind of hanging out down here, but we didn't want to stack another position right at the same price level. So we're in good shape. I like where we're at with both of these. And so we're going to just uh, play these as is on our, um, on our double calendar. Now we, we have six days till expiration on our front week. And then, like I said, on the, uh, on the iron condor, we've got three days. So that's where we're at with SPX. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in SPY. So we had a short call vertical spread. Again, got down to that 11 days to expiration. We were well over 50% of max profit. So we wanted to roll this out, extend duration, keep that short delta in our portfolio. And then we adjusted our strikes down to compensate for the move down in the market. Uh, so uh, let's go to SPY. And then I'll make some comments about our overall short delta exposure at this time. So SPY, so yeah, it's, it's moved up a little bit since then, but still within range, just holding it, looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that. As far as our short delta to theta ratio, for, for all you new members, we like to keep kind of a range of our overall portfolio bias. We like to keep a little bit of short delta to help with those big downside moves like we've seen recently, and that, that certainly has helped. Uh, we are, but we like to be between one to one and five to one. So if our theta is $100, we like our short delta to be negative 100 all the way up to maybe negative 500. And right now we are a little bit under that one to one. We do, we are short. We do have a slight short bias in our overall portfolio, uh, but we, uh, but our theta numbers are actually higher than our short delta. So uh, we'll continue to look to potentially add some short delta. We added a couple uh, pieces this week, which I'll get to here in a second. Uh, but you don't want to over adjust. You don't want to over tweak that. And that's why we have kind of a wide range that we like to play in with that short delta versus our theta ratio. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we have two, two different sets of short call verticals in, in the queues that we've been rolling for that short delta exposure. And we rolled one of them from August out to September and then uh, adjusted our strikes accordingly. Uh, I'll go to the I'll go to the platform here after our other one. Next trade was the closing trade of a previous double calendar that we had in SPX. Uh, price had moved significantly lower, um, and uh, we closed that one out. Um, let's see, what did we do on that? Let's go to our closed trades real quick. Oh, yeah, that's the one that we took the big loss on. So price had, that's when price made that huge move. And so then we had to exit that one for, for a big loss. Hopefully we're going to get that back next week with our current trades that we have on. Um, let's go back to our alerts. And that was on 8.5. Sorry, just scrolling here, trying to get back in, on track. Yeah, okay, here we go. All right, so next alert was the opening trade in KRE. So we sold some premium. We were looking for spots to sell some premium with the IV spike. IV percentile is up to 99 on KRE, so we sold a strangle. Uh, KRE, we're, we're almost at that 30% of max profit. We're at about 25%, so we're going to hold this a little bit longer. Uh, but 
you can see when that implied volatility contracted, how quickly it can contract. Still pretty centered here. So might be able to take this one off early next week if things kind of stay stable. Uh, but we'll see what happens in KRE. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is another one we've been holding for that short delta exposure. This is a long put vertical. And um, this one we stayed in the same cycle because we still had 45 days to expiration. So we weren't rolling out in time with this big move down. We were simply just rolling our strikes closer to the current price to lock in that gain on that piece that we had and then just kind of continue to keep that short delta exposure. So now what we've got in ES is this piece here, and you can see price is hanging out right here. It's in range, just looking for some more downside to benefit that piece. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DE. Okay, I completely butchered this one, so I apologize. Uh, I, I'm usually pretty good. I make very few mistakes on these alerts, but uh, but man, I'm not sure what was going on. Maybe I didn't have my coffee yet that morning. I, can't, I don't know, but... I completely butchered this one. Basically, we had a long put vertical spread in that we put on in DE a couple cycles ago, and then we rolled. And what happened is I tried to roll this, and I accidentally, um, I accidentally picked the wrong expiration cycle. So you know, toss defaults to the next weekly, and so that's what it defaulted to. I forgot to change it to the next, uh, the September cycle, which is what I was trying to run to. And then when I and then I went to go fix it, and for some reason I was thinking short call vertical spread, and uh, and so I sold a short call vertical spread instead of a long put spread. Now on the risk profile they're virtually identical, so it's it's pretty much the same trade, but I just completely flipped this from a long put vertical <laughs> into a short call vertical. Now what we did is we ended up just keeping it as a short call vertical. Uh, reason being is because. Let's go to the chart on DE, and you can see uh, they have earnings on 816. So with earnings, obviously, we're going to get an implied volatility crush after the earnings announcement. So, you, so we really want to be net sellers of options. And so that's why I said, you know what, let's just keep this as a short call vertical because we're, we're going to hold this through earnings, and, and we're going to get that implied volatility crush, and it's going to help a short call vertical just a little bit more than it would a long put vertical. So that's the plan. I apologize for that. I, I just completely butchered it. Nothing else to say on that. But so now let me go back just to confirm. I, I posted on this several times in the community just so everyone's clear. Uh, but so here's what we hold now. We've got the uh, short 155 call and the long 160 call. You can see price is pretty close to where we rolled it. So hopefully we get a little bit more down movement in DE. So that's the plan there. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas for slash NG. So we bought back, uh, we got down to that 21 days to expiration. So we've got two pieces on here. So we took one of them, rolled it out. To, from the September to the October cycle, or if you're not trading on TOS, that was the one with 21 days out to the one with 50 days. And we just adjusted our calls from 2.55 down to 2.3. Prices kind of moved lower, so we want we continue to kind of roll down those calls. Kept our puts at that three strike, and, uh, and then we were holding our other one in September. Uh, we ended up rolling the other piece today, so I'll go to the platform here. Once we get to uh, once we get to that one, next one uh, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we went ahead and rolled our other set of short call verticals and adjusted the strikes down there as well. And so if we go to the platform on QQQs, what you'll see here is this is both of them together. They're just one strike difference. And so kind of just look at these both together. But you can see prices just inside our range here again, just holding for that short. Uh, short delta exposure in our overall portfolio. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So this was uh, one of our weekly iron condors that we closed out of, booked a tiny profit on that one. And I think like 130 bucks or something like that. This was with that huge move down, this was well out of our range, almost to a point where we closed it for uh, a big loss, but we just gave it a little patience, and sure enough, we got, got a bounce in the market, got back into range, and we went ahead and closed that one out for, for a small profit. 
Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we've got two sets of short call verticals, took one of them and then rolled those strikes closer to the current price. We were well over 50% of max profit. Uh, with September, still had 44 days to expiration, so we didn't roll out in time. We just simply rolled our strikes down. So that's what we did in DIA. Let's take a look. And we've got two different sets here. So very similar to QQQ, just you know, one strike difference. So we'll just look at both of these together because they're virtually, virtually the same. But you can see prices right here. Just look again, looking for some downside to benefit those pieces. Next trade, EEM. So this is one where we wanted to add some short delta. And in this case, we just kept it really simple. We just bought a put. We just bought a long put. Uh, by doing so, we're going to get, you know, if, if price does move in our favor, we're going to get that expansion of implied volatility. And if things really get hairy, we've got that unlimited upside. And so we just wanted to put that on in EEM. You can see price has moved a little bit higher since we put this on, but we've got uh, you know, obviously, uh, that downside exposure that we want uh, from EEM. If we take a look at the charts, you know, part of the, you know, we, like everything else, we had this big push down, then a little bit of a bounce higher. And so that looked like a good point to add some short delta. And so price is starting to roll over today. So we'll see what happens into next week. Now we, we put this on, I had a couple questions on this. We put this on, uh, pretty deep in the money. You can see it's the 85 delta. And the reason we do that is to, to minimize that theta decay. You know, if we're, if we're buying out of the money options, that theta is going to decay pretty quickly. But if we buy them deep in the money, um, that's, that's why we do that because it kind of, there's, there's a lot less theta decay, uh, on those long options. Next trade, opening trade in Netflix. So we added some more short delta. And in this case, we did a long put vertical in Netflix. Uh, they just announced earnings recently, so we don't have to worry about earnings. And again, just adding some short delta uh, in, into our overall portfolio. Now, why did we choose Netflix? Well, we were looking for a big tech name um, and, and it kind of fit the bill. Same thing, push down, a little bounce higher. Looking forward to potentially roll over, which it's doing a good job of today. Took a little heat for that uh, uh, yesterday as it, as it moved higher on us, uh, but we're we're basically back to the point of where we entered the trade. So just looking for some more downside to benefit that one. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So I already showed that one. That was just the other set that we went ahead and rolled down as well as as price continued to move lower. Uh, opening trade. This is where we opened up our double calendar, and you know, keep in mind in, in toss it shows as double diagonal, but it's a double calendar. Uh, we entered this one with seven days to expiration on the front and 22 on the back, and those were our calls and puts. So, implied volatility. Uh, the mark was up big. Implied volatility is contracting, so that's why we chose the uh, double calendar over the iron condor. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So this was today. We took our other piece, our other short strangle, and we went ahead and rolled that. Moved our calls down from 2.5 down to 2.35 and then kept those uh, puts at 3. So let's go to the platform and check out Natty Gas. And what you can see is price is just hanging out here in the lower end of the range. And so we, we desperately need some upside movement in Natty Gas. You can see here, this is both positions together. The strikes on the call are just one different, and then we're sharing the three put like we have for the last couple of cycles. So that's why you see the, the uh, two contracts on that one. So looking for some upside movement in Natty Gas. It's been on a real uh, slippery slide to the downside. Hopefully we've found a little bit of a bottom here. We can get a little bit of a pop higher and kind of stabilize around that level. That would be the, uh, the ultimate for Nat Gas. So that's the, uh, that's the plan there. Just continue to stay mechanical. Play the probabilities. Uh, next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IYR. So this morning, uh, price made a big move up in IYR. And so we took off that uh, that put vertical side because it was basically worthless. Got out for four cents. And so now we're just holding that call side. And then we're also holding a full iron condor. So what we'll do here in IYR and now it's moving down, which is good. So moving back in our favor, but this is it. I mean, it blew through our break even 
And so we need a, so we're just going to hold this into next week, see if we can get a little bit of downside movement. You know, if we can get back into range, that'd be great. If not, uh, you know, if, you know, regardless of what happens, we're going to close this out next week because we've got seven days to expiration at this point. And then we've got this other iron condor here that's already out in September. And you can see prices just kind of hanging out right here, fairly centered, a little bit to the upper end of the range. And so we'll just continue to hold and manage that one as well. And then lastly, uh, we did an opening trade this morning in MA, and uh, which is MasterCard. We were just looking for a, kind of a higher price symbol to do a defined risk trade in with high implied volatility. Uh, MA fit that bill as it uh, as it trades at a higher price in that 275-ish range. Um, targeting 30 to 40 percent of max profit. Let's take a look on the platform at MA. I mean, this isn't one that we trade a lot, but uh, you know, implied volatility 78 on the percentile, nice and high. They just announced earnings about a week and a half ago, so we don't have to worry about that for a while. And so, hopefully, we get some stabilization in price there, and we are able to book a profit in uh, in Mastercard. So. That is that. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. Wild moves in oil. Uh, I mean, we had a huge move down at, on this day and this day. Was, I mean, this is a huge, that's a 7% down move. That's a, like a, that was down like five and a half, six percent at one point and then rallied half of the way back and then boom, boom, shot back up. So we were literally at our short put. We were way down here and prices moved all the way back up to uh, being in a profitable position. So hopefully prices kind of stabilize around here and we can let that theta decay in our favor. Uh, I mentioned ES. Let's look at gold. We've got this iron condor. You can see prices just barely breached our break even right here. If we take a look at our puts, um, you know, we've still got a, uh, we've still got a little bit of uh, premium left in those. So we're going to hold it over the weekend. Obviously, if we get a down move in gold back into range, we'll be good to go. If we continue higher, then we'll go ahead and close out this put vertical side and probably add another centered iron condor uh, around wherever price is at that point. So look for that in GC. I mentioned Natty Gas. I mentioned Bonds. Wheat. So wheat's making a little bit of a move up here. You can't really see the notch because it's on that break-even point, but price is basically right here, almost back into range. Uh, so if we get a little bit more up movement in uh, wheat, we can take that one off and book a profit on that piece of the that piece overall. Uh, we've got 14 days on that one, so hopefully we can get a little bit of a movement uh, into next week and take care of that. And then the other piece that we have is this uh, full iron condor. Price is hanging out right here near center. So just holding for more theta decay in that one. Uh, I mentioned Apple. We've got that uh, long put vertical. I mentioned DE. I mentioned DIA. I mentioned EEM. Goldman Sachs. We've got this long put vertical here. That's also for some short delta, short bias. Uh, so just looking for some downside in Goldman. Uh, Intel. So we've got this adjusted short strangle where you can see price is sitting right here. Now we are above 50% of max profit on this piece. Uh, if we were closer to expiration, I would either close or roll this out, but we've still got 42 days to expiration. Uh, we're down about 100 bucks on the trade overall after adjustment, so I'm just kind of holding on to this. If we can get back to break even on the trade, we'll probably exit with a small profit, uh, or we'll just kind of let this hang out and then potentially roll out to October once we get closer to that point, we wouldn't. We're not going to wait all the way down to 21 days to expiration, uh, but once these October options get down into that 60 range, you know, so another 10 days or so, we'll either look to either just close this out, depending on where things are, or roll out to October. IWM, we've got an iron condor here, where you can see price is uh, fairly centered. Got a little bit of profit, not enough to take off yet. Uh, I mentioned IYR, I mentioned KRE, MA, Netflix, Qs, SMH. Uh, so we've got two different adjusted strangles in here. Uh, you can see prices hanging out right here in this one. Both of these are in September. And so just playing the waiting game on these, just letting uh, some more theta decay in SMH for us. I mentioned SPX, uh, SPY. I think I mentioned that one too. Yeah, we've got this short call vertical. Just looking for some more downside. VXX, this was one that we put on when implied volatility 
spiked. You know, we thought this was the spike, but then we got this on top of that. <laughs> now it has has rolled over as as things have calmed down a little bit. Uh, but if we look at the trade, so we're we're just inside range. Price was way out here after that big spike and has come all the way back into range here. So just uh, looking for things to kind of stabilize uh, in, in here. Now, remember, this is inversely correlated to the market. So if the market goes down, you're going to see prices move higher on this. If prices move higher on stocks, then you're going to see this move back down in our favor. So uh, just kind of using it as a little uh, hedge against um, volatility. And then lastly, XLK. So we've got a long put vertical on here. You know, this is one that we could uh, potentially look to roll the strikes closer, but I'm just giving this more time. I mean, this this doesn't really start to flatten out until up here. So if we can get a, another sharp move lower, we will either roll these strikes closer and or potentially roll out to October. When we get into next week, uh, we're, we still won't be in the 60 days till expiration range. Uh, but with these kind of more directional pieces, I don't mind going out a little bit further out in duration, um, uh, even into the, you know, once this gets down into the 60s, even if it's not below 60, we'll potentially roll out to October. So that is the plan there. Those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Everybody have a great week and catch you next week.